Hi everyone, welcome to another Sugar Tits video. Hope you all had a smashing New Year's. So today we're going to be talking about first date nightmares. So I was curious and I decided to look up some of the worst things you can find out about the person you're dating for the first time. You know, things that just turn you off them completely. Some of these things include talking about your ex the whole time. Yes, that would be annoying, wouldn't it? You're basically getting a first row seat into why all of their relationships have failed and all the red flags are just popping out like crazy and you're thinking, thinking, oh my god, run. Another one is your date spends their whole time on the phone. Some of them are quite petty, like they chew with their mouth open, they're rude to the waiter. Hey, maybe the waiter f***ed up their order. Personally, I would never be rude to a waiter because I'm not about to piss off the person who's handling my food, okay? I don't want a side order of salad with Jizzy Ranch sauce all over it. No thank you. <laughs> They show up late. Okay, yes, that one would piss me off. They won't stop complimenting you. Yeah, okay, I could kind of see how that'd be a cringe factor. It's like you've just met me, you don't even know me. Just slow down, put the brakes on. Stop trying to butter me up to get the clam, okay? I'm a self-respecting woman. You're not getting clam on the first date. They expect you to hook up with them. Ah, so this one actually leads into the story we'll be looking at today. Now you think most blokes wouldn't assume that going on a first date with someone that she would be giving it up. And I'm talking about if they see this person as an actual potential partner, not someone they just want to hit and quit, you know? But what happens when you're on a first date and the girl in front of you reveals what she does for a living? Honely clams. Does a switch flip in the brain when she reveals that what she does for a living is basically be a paid glorified skankatron? Maybe. <laughs> Or maybe you just start looking at this woman as not someone you want as a potential girlfriend. Maybe this person just becomes someone you wouldn't mind banging on the first date, but definitely not someone you want to share your life with. Because it takes some kind of guy to be okay knowing that all their family and friends, all their mates, anyone who wants to, can find their girlfriend's poon clam on the internet and just view it, just get all up in that and just, you know... You know what I mean? To it, if they wanted to. It'd make hosting family barbecues an embarrassing event, wouldn't it? Because you know your male friends have probably gone on the internet and looked her up and they know exactly what her bits and pieces look like. They know what the baps look like, they know what the clam looks like, and they know what her butt ring looks like. And uh, yeah, they probably milked it to it. Awkward! So anyway, me and Bering have been watching a lot of these dating shows lately. We have a good laugh at all of the unco tards who get invited to go on these shows. Whole bunch of skanks, losers and red flaggers. And very rarely do any of these relationships work out. But it is fun to watch. Having said that, make sure you go check out Bering's channel. Every now and then we do a combined video where we watch and take the piss out of Love Don't Judge. It's good fun. It's good fun. The last one we did was about a, a couple where the husband likes to drink his wife's titty milk. Ooh. God. Yeah, go check it out if you can stomach it. But anyway, back to the Honely Clams date. Bloke has awkward reaction when first date reveals what she does for money. There's always that mate in the group chat that seems to come back with the wildest stories from their dates. So wild that you question if they're actually going out with anyone at all. But this bloke certainly has quite the tale for his friends after his date made an interesting reveal. <laughs> and look at his face there as he's being told. <laughs> he's in some kind of shock. But he has to be careful about the way he reacts. I mean, he doesn't want to be portrayed to the whole world as a douchebag. Look at her. When I first saw this article and looked at her, I actually didn't know if that was a woman or not, to be honest. She has very masculine sort of features in the face there. <laughs> and actually, that would be even more funny if you found out that one, her job was doing only clams, and two, that she wasn't even a real woman. Poor bastard. Greg is one of the daters to feature in tonight's January 2nd new episode of First Dates. Now, if you haven't seen First dates. Basically, it's a dating show where they get two random people who are looking for love. Basically losers. Not all, but basically all of them are losers. And red flaggers who just can't seem to stay in relationships and they don't know why. But obviously it's not because of them. <laughs> It's all the other people they were in failed relationships with. They're the cause. So what happens when you get two of these people together? Great television viewing. Starting off the brand new season, there's a rather awkward moment to kick it off. Matched up with his self-confessed 
gamer data, Mercedes delivers him quite the shock when she reveals what she does to make cash. Revealing she has a net worth of £400,000, she explains she started doing only clams to boost her income and, well, Greg doesn't quite know what to say. Greg's in shock. Greg's imagining that future family barbecue we just talked about. Greg's thinking, I don't want my family and friends to have seen my wife's or girlfriend's for JJ. An ass crack hole. <laughs> And we are going to watch the clip of this. Let's take a look. Time to spin, time to spin. One, two. Let's begin. Let's begin. What do you do for work? What do you do for work? Go on, love. Tell him. Tell him you are a paid glorified skankatron who makes money from guys paying for your stanky cooch. Come on, guys. Stop paying for the stanky cooch. God. So when I finished uni, it was like... It's a job. Yeah. Okay, so when I finished uni, it was hard to get a job. So rather than keep trying to find a job, I gave up and decided to flash my tatas on the internet. Why even bother going to uni? You've probably just spent a minimum of three years devoting your time to study something to get a job in that field. Paying a large amount of money to study that and get into that field. And after completing it, because it was a, uh, oh, it was just a little bit too hard to find a job, because you didn't know jack shit about the real world, you went for the easiest, most skankatroniest stream of income that you could find. Only clams. First in everything, and then you step into the real world and it's like, what? Like, you can't get a job? You step into the real world and realise you can't get a job. That is honestly the problem with a lot of these younger generation types. They go to uni, they do their studies, and after they're finished, they think it's all just going to be handed to them on a silver platter. I spent all this time studying. Someone should hire me. I'm qualified. Just hire me. No, it doesn't work like that. You're in the real world now. You've got to compete with other people who have spent just as much time as you have studying. And in the end, the person who wants it the most, the person who puts in the most footwork to try and find a job, is going to be the one who gets it, is going to be the one who comes out on top. Not like you, <laughs> who's going to be the one who gets cummed on on top and in the bottom. <laughs> Shit. So I was like, maybe I should just try something to kind of earn a little bit of money on the side. try something to earn a little bit of money on the side. I could do literally anything. I could do anything. There are so many jobs out there that don't require a degree. I can go do that. I can go work in a shop. I could go clean someone's house. I could go serve up some fries at McDonald's. Anything. You know, any kind of job where I would get to maintain my dignity and not reveal my body to the whole world on the internet where it's going to be there for ever and it's going to very likely make finding another job in the profession that you had originally set out to be in extremely hard because you know what people do today before they hire people they go onto social media they google you they check you out on facebook and when it comes down to it when you're looking at prospects to hire for your company they tend to choose the person who hasn't flashed their shit all over the internet harsh i know but the truth and someday when the attractiveness of your your body has run its course and you're shocked to shit to realize that you're not making money anymore because you're not as desirable to look at, you're going to want to quit Honely Clams and look at getting into a real job, the job that you sought out in the beginning when you went to uni. And it's gonna be tough. You've sold that dream to make a quick and easy buck flashing your shit on the internet on Honely Clams. So I was like, maybe I should just try something to kind of earn a little bit of money on the side. <laughs> oh, he knows. He knows. Look at his expression. <laughs> Oh my God, what does this bitch do to make a little bit of money on, on the side? Because you can see the shame in her face. You can see the shame in her face. She knows this is going to be an issue because it has been an issue in her previous dating history. Surprise, surprise. Most men don't want to date someone who does only clams. How is this guy about to react? And you know he's thinking it could only be a few things, but it's definitely not good. She could either be a lady who dances and removes her clothing, or she could be a pay me cash for or a sexy good time woman of the night person. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to get around basically just calling them what they are or the stupid YouTube algorithm will get me. Or she could be into honely clams. Go on, love, tell them what you do. 
Let's see where he fans. Dun dun dun! <laughs> and look at his face. Oh shit! What do I say here? Look, look at the body language. He's got his hand up. He's rubbing his neck. The lips are all pursed together, and probably looks like what her a hole looks like when she's flashing it on Honly Clams. <laughs> <laughs> look at his left eyes, like all twitching. He's freaking out. Okay. Don't look at me like that. No, I was, I was, no, I'm. Okay, don't look at me like that. <laughs> don't look at me. No, no, no. It's, it's totally okay. I'm totally okay with this. <sighs> what did you think I do for work? I don't know. I, I didn't assume. <laughs> but wow. Well, okay. <laughs> His reaction is priceless. The nervous laughter, the body language, it just says it all. And she's trying to smile it off like it's no big deal. <laughs> like I haven't just made this guy want to run a f***ing mile. <laughs> Approximately how much money do you make a year? My net worth is 400,000. I made 70k in a month. I've made more money so far in this career that I would have made having done something in neuroscience. She studied neuroscience? That's another thing, isn't it? This is how you know this is becoming a problem. When girls who have enough intelligence to be able to get into a course to study something like neuroscience or law or medicine are ditching that career path to do skank work, to do online skank work. This is how you know it's become a fucking problem in society and men Please, you have to stop paying these bitches to do this. I don't understand it. I don't understand the trend. You know, back in the day before Honly Clams, there were a lot of girls out there who were doing it tough, who were broke as hell that couldn't find jobs. But you know what? The first thing that popped into their head wasn't, it's cool, I'll just go online and get dudes to pay me to show my shit, to show my body to the world. I'll just sell my dignity for as much as I can get for it. That's totally cool. That's a great career path. It's too freaking easy, isn't it? It's too easy easy and it's become trendy. And like her a-hole, it's f***ed in the ass. A lot of the time, these girls, they're not dumb girls. Like a lot of the girls there are actually paying their way for uni and they're, they're working their ass off and they're good at what they do. <laughs> they certainly are working their ass off. I give you that. They certainly are working their ass off. Whole off. Well, they can't work their ass off. They need it. It's they an asset. It. <laughs> they can't work their ass off. They need an asset. Their ass is the asset. I mean, I know why I can't have a normal relationship. I have a very interesting job and... Interesting. Interesting job. Colourful job. <laughs> Use every washed out conservative term you can think of to describe it. You're a glorified skank. Come on, this is the glorified feminist age of the skank pride. Just own it. Call yourself what you really are. I'm quite a complicated person, but I think... I deserve to be loved. I feel like it's high time. Okay, well, you know, the sympathetic part of me does want to agree, does want to think, oh, love, yeah, you know, everyone does deserve to be loved. But the realist asshole in me chimes in <laughs> and thinks, no, no, actually, not Everyone deserves to be loved because love is a two-way street, isn't it? To be loved, you have to put yourself in the best position so that you can be loved. And that has nothing to do with you. That has everything to do with your consideration of the person that you want to love you, how you treat that person, how you behave with that person. And like I said, it is a sad reality that most people do not want their girlfriends to behave in that manner. They are not interested in a partner that they know they will be sharing with the entire world or whoever wants to pay for it. And I'm not saying that's everyone. Some males are more comfortable being simp cuckinators than others, but the majority of men will not want that. So sympathetic me says, yes, you do deserve love and I hope you do find it. But then asshole realist in me says, what you're doing as a profession is kind of stopping you from being in a position to ever receive love and that's nobody else's fault but your own. A lot of people have a problem with it, so... Once again, a lot of men do have a problem with it when it's someone they are considering as a potential partner. No, I believe sex works real work, so... That's a very good thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> well done, son. He's given the most PR-friendly answer he could think of on television. Way to protect your image there. <laughs> And you know he's thinking, look, I think sex work is real work. I am more than willing to pay a prosit to suck on the knob. That's, that's some good work. Well done. My balls, thank you. Thumbs up. Here's a tip. But... <laughs>
I don't really want to date that prosa. I'm sorry. On to the next one. <laughs> Okay, so that was the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to go check me out on Rumble, BitChute, Odyssey, and Twitter, and I'll catch you in the next one. Tits out, everyone.